afternoon students so i am ms republica borgohai assistant professor department of pharmaceutical science so today i am going to start a topic related to pharmaceutical jurisprudence and the topic is narcotic and psychotropic substances act so here it begins so i want to give an introduction regarding the narcotic and psychotropic substances act it is popularly known for the term drug trafficking so as we all know that drug trafficking it's a, a global illicit trade it's a trade involving the cultivation manufacture distribution and sale of substances which are subjected to drug prohibition laws so in this law many type of conflicting judgments also arises which confuses the general public so now i will discuss about how the law evolved so first of all the opium act it was derived in the year 1857 and it was revised first in 1878 then in 1950 the opium act of 1878 was revised as the opium and revenue laws act 1950 then on 16 september 1985 the above mentioned acts were replaced and the finally narcotic and psychotropic substances act 1985 was enforced so now i'll discuss about the objects and the legislative intent of this act so first of all to consolidate that means to bind together and amend when bracket change the law relating to narcotic drugs secondly to make stringent that is strict or firm provision for the control and regulation of operations relating to narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances thirdly and also related to all the matters connected with this law okay so now i'm going to discuss about the illicit traffic how illicit trafficking is done in narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances act so first of all cultivating any coca plant or gathering any portion of coca plant secondly cultivating the opium poppy or any cannabis plant thirdly engaging in the production manufacture possession sell purchase transportation warehousing concealment hiding use of consumption interstate import interstate export import into india export from india or transshipment of narcotic drugs or psychotropic substances then financing any activity by the person itself or with the help of any other person in support of doing this kind of acts okay then harboring that means giving shelter to the persons engaged in any kind of activity that means illicit trafficking of narcotic drugs then encouraging or assisting or planning any secret plannings in the furtherance or in support of doing any of the aforesaid acts except to the extent permitted under the ndps act 1985 so in this act they are saying that encouraging or assisting or planning any kind of secrets or permitting any license or authorization without the actual permission of the ndps act law we cannot do any kind of illegal eliciting trafficking and all they are saying about that so now i want to discuss about the role of the officers of central government so first of all i want to discuss about the narcotic commissioners role so under the provision of this act the central government has appointed narcotic commissioner and such other officer if they feel that they are fit for the profession so here the narcotic commissioner himself or with the help of other officers they perform the functions such as supervision of the cultivation of the opium poppy then production of opium and other functions as may be entrusted to him by the central government the state government also appoints such kind of officers if they feels that they are fit for the uh, profession related to this act so now we'll discuss about the consultative committee so the consultative committee consists of not actually consists of they are constituted by efficient administration of this act by the central government as an advisory committee so they are selected as the advisory committee uh, by the central government 
So they consist of one chairman and not more than 20 members. Then thirdly, they advise the central government on the matters related to the administration of this act. So this is the role of consultative committee. Now comes the prohibition control and regulation. So no person shall cultivate any coca plant or gather any portion of coca plant or cultivate the opium poppy or any cannabis plant. Or thirdly, uh, except for any medical purpose or scientific purposes, they cannot be allowed to produce or manufacture or sell any kind of narcotic drugs without the proper permission of the law. So control on certain operations by central government. So first of all, the central government empowers and the fixes time limits within which the licenses are given for the cultivation of the opium poppy. So secondly, the land which is being used for the cultivation of the opium, it shall be delivered by the cultivators to the authorized officers of the Narcotic and Psychotropic Substances Act. So thirdly, prescribe the forms and conditions of licenses for cultivation of the opium poppy and for the production and manufacture of opium. Then the fees related to it, that means um, while um, cultivation, the fees which has been charged regarding that, then for the grants, uh, then for the, uh, then the authorities, which uh, they grant the licenses, they may refuse also or they may cancel. This kind of appeals or any refusal, permissions or cancellations of the licenses shall lie in this kind of act. Then the price to be paid to the cultivators for the opium should be delivered. Also, if it is found after a proper examination by the central government in the central government factory that uh, the opium which has been delivered by a cultivator it has been adulterated, then it may be confiscated or that means cheese by the officers authorized on this behalf. They are saying that if the opium that is being cultivated by a cultivator in the central government factory, if it is found to be adulterated, then the officers, those who are authorized by the central government for this act, they may cheese the or that means confiscate, confiscate the government factory. Now the offenses and penalties related to this act. So the first punishment is, it is the punishment for contravention in relation to poppy straw. That means rigorous imprisonment for not less than 10 years which may extend to 20 years with fine not less than 1 lakh rupees which may extend to 2 lakh or more for certain reasons. So first punishment is for the poppy straw. If illegal type of poppy straw has been cultivated, then imprisonment may be less than 10 years or it may extend up to 20 years with a fine of not less than 1 lakh or it may extend up to 2 lakh or it may be rice also for certain reasons. Then secondly, punishment for contravention in relation to coca plant and coca leaves. Now the punishment is related to coca plant or the, the coca leaves cultivation. So here also the same imprisonment, imprisonment has been given. So it may be less than 10 years. It may extend up to 20 years with not if less than fine of 1 lakh or it may extend up to 2 lakhs. Thirdly, punishment for contravention in relation to prepared opium. So here also the rigorous imprisonment for a term not less than 10 years which may extend to 20 years with fine not less than 1 lakh which may extend to 2 lakh rupees. So in this three of the punishments the time period for the imprisonment and the fine is same. So now comes the fourth one punishment for embe embezzlement that is the illegal disposal of opium by cultivator. If the cultivator disposes the opium illegally to any of the customers, then they may be subjected to rigorous imprisonment of not less than 10 years 
which may extend up to 20 years and they shall also be liable to fine which shall not less than be 1 lakh or it may extend to 2 lakh rupees. Okay. Then fifth one, punishment for external dealings in narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. So, in case of narcotic drug and psychotropic substances, if some external dealings has been done by the cultivator with uh, the outsiders, that means out of the country, if they do such type of external dealings without any permission, uh, that means without any proper permission of the law, then uh, they may be given the rigorous imprisonment of not less than 10 years term which may extend to 20 years and they may be uh, fined for 1 lakh or it may extend up to 2 lakh rupees. Now the punishments these are related to certain acts by licensee or his servants. That means these punishments are given to the license holder or the servants which are acting under him. So the acts are omits without any reasonable cause to maintain accounts or to submit any. That means uh, a license holder may appoint his uh, assistant for doing the, that means for managing the X. No, sorry, not managing the X, for managing the records. So if the servants or the licensee, they make a mistake without any reasonable cause, they cannot maintain the accounts or submit it properly on the proper time, then they will be given punishment. Again, if they fails to produce without any reasonable cause such license, permit or authorization on demand of any officer authorized by the central government or state government in this behalf. Or if they keeps any accounts or makes any statement which is false. If false record has been kept by the license holder or the assistance provided by them, then also they may be punished. Then fourthly, willfully and knowingly does, does any act in breach of any of the conditions of license, permit or authorization for which a penalty is not prescribed elsewhere in this act. He shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to three years or with fine or both. So if knowingly, if the license holder, they use an they use a permit which is not properly authorized by the narcotic and psychotropic drugs committee then he may be punishable for three years or he may be charged with a fine also or uh, along with that he may be fined and he may be imprisoned also together it may happen so lastly uh, i want to discuss about the punishment regarding the Illegal possession in small quantity for personal consumption of any narcotic drug or psychotropic substance or consumption of such drug or substance. So, if the narcotic drug consumed is cocaine, morphine, diacetyl morphine or any other narcotic drug or any psychotropic substance, then the imprisonment is up to one year or fine or both. Again, if the narcotic drug or psychotropic substance possessed or consumed is other than those mentioned above. That means the narcotic drug or psychotropic substance possessed or consumed is other than those mentioned means cocaine, morphine, diacetyl morphine. Other than that, if any kind of narcotic drug or psychotic, psychotropic substances are being consumed illegally, then imprisonment is up to six months or fine or both. Thank you. So this was about drug that is narcotic and psychotropic substances act. So I think you all have got it. So thank you.